Good afternoon, everyone. This is Narval Central coming back at you with another YouTube video. And it is Monday. I mean, we are barely a couple of days away from the spring game coming up. This is where all the uh, five-second clip viewings of, of practice videos and stuff like that are coming into fruition because you got to look at the nature of this team so far. I mean, we've really struggled the last couple of seasons, and we're trying to get back on the right track. Now, this is a pivotal year for Mike Norvell in his year three. And I do think that there are some question marks uh, regarding some of the positions, but I'll kind of break down that as we go through the video. Uh, first off, I just want to start off by saying thank you for all the love and the support on the YouTube video so far. I've really gained a lot of traction so far with a lot of subscriber counts and view counts, and I just want to thank everyone because without you, this none of this would be possible. Um, but going into the quarterback position, you got three guys there that you're really comfortable in, and, and Tate Rodemaker. Uh, Jordan Travis and also A.J. Duffy. A.J. Duffy being a true freshman, talented quarterback out of IMG. He's very talented in what he can do, but as a true freshman, as I talked about before in one of my other videos, it's very hard for him to be able to really grasp the offense early on in the, in the season. And that's why I do think that Tate Rodemaker has got to take that step forward. But the problem is, is he was only one for two with seven passing yards last season in the game against Florida when Jordan Travis went down. Now, the biggest question mark, everybody wants to clamor for a transfer quarterback. But in reality, if you go to the transfer quarterback or portal and you get a quarterback such as, in, you know, an Alex Hornibrook, for example, um, what does that really do for your room? I mean, it adds a body, but are you really just looking for a body? I mean, and then when you're trying to look for a more experienced option in terms of, you know, a really, really talented quarterback, let's just say a Jane Daniels that went to LSU, would he really come into this, this team really thinking that he's going to be the starter? I, I don't really think anybody's going to take a back seat necessarily. And I think you want to take a quarterback that's going to be successful. But Mike Norvell has stated in his press conferences that Jordan Travis is the guy, whether you like it or not, he is the starting quarterback of this team. And I do think Tate Rodemaker can be a viable second option. I do think that the production of the team is probably going to step down just a little bit. I mean, that's natural. I mean, that's every team in the country is going to have second-team quarterback issues because that isn't your starting quarterback. Um, you know, sometimes last season, you know, we talked about with Mackenzie Milton and Jordan Travis last season, you thought there wasn't going to be much of a drop-off, whichever guy you went with. Uh, believe it or not, Mackenzie Milton didn't really play as well, and Jordan Travis actually played pretty well. Um, you know, he had a 122 completions and 90, 194 attempts. He had 1,539 yards. Uh, a 62.9% completion percentage, and then also 15 touchdowns for six interceptions. He also had a lot on the ground as well. You know, you're looking at 134 carries for 530 yards, and, you know, he was a viable rushing threat. I mean, that it was something really, really important for him going forward. But overall, he's got to stay healthy throughout this process. He's got to be more ready to take those hits. He's got to slide more. We, we've talked about this in previous videos, and I don't want to get too much into the quarterback position because I think you know what we have so far. But with three scholarship quarterbacks, you have to be careful. I mean, there there's a time where even G Geno English could be able to be more of a viable guy as well. But, you know, we'll definitely see how all that plays out. But I am a firm believer in Jordan Travis as long as he can stay healthy. But we'll go ahead and go to the running back position. And we actually had a loss uh, in, in one of these guys, and it was Corey Wren. Uh, he's a very talented playmaker, very fast, can do a lot of things with his feet, but we weren't really able to see a lot out of him. I mean, we tried to see him a little bit in the return game, didn't pan out, didn't really get acclimated to the game, and eventually, due to playing time and just where he was on the roster and how this running back depth is kind of playing out, he really didn't see an opportunity for himself to shine. And now you're left with five scholarship running backs and DJ Williams, Trayshawn Ward, uh, Lawrence Toe, Philly, Trey Benson, and also Rodney Hill. And this kind of leaves a question mark because you're leaving out Jay Sean Corbin that's going to the NFL. He had 143 uh, attempts last season with 80, 887 yards. So he was a pivotal factor. I mean, he averaged 6.2 yards a carry. So there was a lot of good things going on for him just in terms of the season so far. Um, Treshawn Ward was another guy that came in and he averaged 81 carries, uh, 515 yards, and he averaged 6.4 yards per carry. So there was a lot of potential there, but the problem with Treshawn Ward was, was during the last five games of the season, he only had 12 carries for 75 yards and a touchdown. So there wasn't much production at the end of the year. It seemed like he slowed down his production. 
and it was very worrisome. Um, Lawrence Toe Philly, he had a breakout game against Clemson, but what are you expecting? I mean, you know, he hasn't stayed healthy either. I mean, it's it's been kind of a back and forth kind of thing. You bring in a guy like Trey Benson out of Oregon, he only had 81 yards, I believe, at Oregon. And what has he been? He's, he's absolutely destroyed some of his ligaments, and he's got some injury issues. Now, in spring practice so far, he's really been the most consistent guy, him and Trey Sean Ward, and they've really led that backfield there. Can Trey Benson continue to keep that momentum up, and can he continue to keep his explosiveness there? And I think there's a possibility he can, but you always have the, your concerns there. DJ Williams is another guy that was brought in on the transfer portal. I wasn't necessarily fond of the take when we took him out of Auburn, but I thought that there was potential for him to be a possible goal line third down back, and it really just hasn't came to fruition. I mean, he has 10 carries for 47 yards and a touchdown. He mostly played in that UMass game when a lot of people got some opportunities. Maybe he gets some burn. Maybe he doesn't. I just I think that Treshawn Ward, Lawrence Stothilly, and Trey Benson are going to be probably your three main backs there. Um, but we'll definitely see. I think Ward and Benson are probably going to be your one-two punch. And then Toe is going to be kind of that gadget player, possibly out of the slot as well at the tailback position. And then Rodney Hill, he's really impressed as a true freshman. But like I said about A.J. Duffy, he's a true freshman. So there's going to be a lot of things that he's going to have to learn and develop his game and just kind of continue to develop that throughout time. Um, going on to the wide receiver position, this has kind of been a question mark for last season. This was something that Florida State really, really needed to work on. And they were able to get four transfer wide receivers after not getting any in the last recruiting cycle. We talked about that last time with Rod Nugans in the last video. But, you know, you got guys like Winston Wright Jr. and Micah Pittman and Johnny Wilson and Deuce Fan. But the problem is, is now Winston Wright with that leg injury, you don't know the timetable and you're really trying to bank on him rehabbing and getting back into the fall. And that would be huge if you're able to get him back by the LSU game. So that way you can kind of develop some kind of chemistry going there. Malik McClain's an interesting option because, you know, he played a lot last season as a true freshman. He was able to be effective. Uh, Joshua Burrell kind of got hurt later uh, earlier in the season and really wasn't able to get that opportunity to be successful. Johnny Wilson, they've talked about it and raved about it. His 6'7 frame is something that can be really exceptional to some of those defenders and was able to get wide open separation. Uh, Ja'Kai Douglas, I think, is going to be an X factor in this wide receiver room because – Whenever he got the opportunities, he was successful. I mean, he really was successful. But the problem was is they never really really played him. So when you're looking at his stats, I mean, he had 14 receptions, 255 yards, and he had an 18.2 average per catch. I mean, he was absolutely lightning in a bottle. And we talked about this last time in my Q&A with him was that, you know, that Miami moment for him when he had that wheel route with Jordan Travis – that was exceptional in that last drive. I mean, that set up the Andrew Parkman fourth and 14 conversion. And when you really think about it, Florida State really hasn't had much quality receivers throughout these past few years, really since 2014, really, if you want to think about it. I mean, Tamori and Terry was okay, but, I mean, there just hasn't really been a consistent receiver um, since Rashad Green, Kelvin Benjamin. You know, there's been some guys that have came through here, but they've never really been super consistent. And Ontario Wilson was okay. He had 23 receptions for 382 yards. But is that really somebody you want for your number one wide receiver to have 382 yards? I just don't think so. I mean, Keyshawn Helton had the same thing. Uh, he had 19 receptions for 285 yards. I mean, yeah. I mean, Jordan Young, okay, if you can get something out of him. Kentron Portier, they're trying to really do him really big there in the goal line, try to give him some more fade routes, being more consistent. Darian Williamson had some flashes last season, but he also is coming off that torn ACL. And then Deuce Span, you know, you have the 6'4 frame, but, you know, what are you going to get out of it? And I think the most consistent with Winston Wright Jr. going down is probably going to be Micah Pittman for the most part. I think that him being at six foot, I think he can play on the outside and the slot. I think you can utilize him everywhere. So if him and Johnny Wilson, if Johnny Wilson doesn't go to a flex tight end position, I think it could be viable for both of them to be a really successful piece in this offense. But moving on to the tight ends, this is a really big question mark because you really have Cam McDonald that is your consistent receiver there at tight end. He had 24 receptions for 243 yards last season. And then you kind of sprinkled in some Wyatt Rector in the goal line. It kind of worked out. You, you kind of had some Preston Daniel walk on tight end, but nothing really special. I mean, it wasn't really anything that really panned out. And you got guys like Kobe Gross and, and Marquise and Douglas and Jackson West and Jarrell Powers and Brian Courtney – Jerome Powers is going to be coming in during the summer, so we're going to have to see how he plays out. But Brian Courtney's been okay. 
converted quarterback over to tight end, and he hasn't really played too much tight end. But, you know, he's got some experience and got some good hands as well. Um, you can see the potential coming out of that. But you're hoping that a Marquise and Douglas or a Jackson West steps up as that number two tight end, or you can go to that flex tight end position that I was talking about with Johnny Wilson being 6'7", 230. Overall, the tight end position is kind of a question mark, and I'm a little bit nervous to see what they do with that position because Mike Norvell likes to run multiple tight end sets, and that's really something you have to worry about considering what Mike Norvell does with tight ends in this offense. But overall, I like the room and their potential, but I just don't know if they're going to be able to develop quickly behind Cam McDonald. Um, But we'll see. Uh, Offensive line, they absolutely rehauled the offensive line, and I absolutely love some of the additions they brought in. Uh, You know, they got Dylan Gibbons coming back from last season. You got guys like Caden Wiles that I think is going to be the starting center for this season as well. Plus Harris, he's an option that you can have at redshirt freshman or redshirt junior, but – I don't know if he's quite ready to make that jump just yet. I mean, Darius Washington can play all over the offensive line, and uh, they even played him at center sometimes last season. So he's a viable piece as well. He'll be out for the rest of the spring, I believe. I don't think he's going to be playing during the spring game, uh, as they kind of reported he was going to be out with an injury. And then you also had Thomas Schrader, speaking of an injury, uh, did not play last season, and he kind of got hurt in fall camp. And you're hoping that there is some kind of production out of him Marie Smith needs to get up the little body weight a little bit more, but, you know, you see the potential of what he can do. He just got out manhandled a little bit in the center position. I think he's at about 275 right now, so he's got to get up that weight if he wants to be more successful. Zane Herring is another guy. He's okay as a reserve guard, but they just really tried to get him up to speed, and I don't think it's really happening just yet. Uh, Lloyd Willis is another guy. He's, he's got the body frame to be successful. He's lost a couple of pounds, so I think he's down to 291 now. But I do think that he can be the successful piece, but he's just got to be more consistent. I think he could play the right tackle position, but I'm not really sure if they're ready to do that just yet with him because Wes Harris could be that option. But like I said, it's just all inconsistent, especially at the tackle position. Robert Scott is a left tackle that's actually projected in the first round uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals in one of the mock drafts. So that's really exciting to see there as a Florida State offensive lineman for the first time in, in what seems like forever since Cam Irving. Um, has been kind of getting the draft conversation. Rod Orr is another one, developmental prospect. I think he played basketball for most of his career. He's just trying to figure out everything. Uh, Bryson Estes could be another guy at guard or center that you can bring in. Uh, Julian Armello is going to be enrolling during the summer. Uh, St. Thomas Aquinas does not do early enrollees, so we'll have to see how he goes. Uh, Jalen Early is another uh, late enrollee. He's going to be coming in with Terrell Powers, his teammate from Duncanville High School. Uh, Quayshon Sapp, another guy that's going to be coming in the summer. So there's quite a few guys that are coming in during the summer. Um, Dalton Richardson, he's actually an early enrollee. He's played decently well, but as a true freshman, as an offensive lineman, you need time to develop and kind of grow. Uh, same thing with Kaniah Charleston as well. He's got to get that body weight down a little bit more, and I think the staff is really working on getting him in, but he is really, really impressive to look at, though. Um, good start for him. And then Tavius Woody, I really don't know if he's going to be able to come in. I hope so with the academic issues and, and some of the things to bring him in. We'll definitely hope and, and pray that that happens. But um, just overall, I like the offensive line. But are you going to be able to get eight guys? And that's the biggest storyline for me going forward in that group. But overall, the defensive end group, this is a bigger question mark too. I mean, this is a situation where you have Keir Thomas and also Jermaine Johnson being departing to the NFL and going their separate ways from Florida State. Uh, They did a tremendous job at Florida State having 18 sacks last season combined. And there's got to be more production from that group this year. Everybody's got to start stepping up. I don't think when you brought in a guy like Jared Burst from Albany and he having those nine sacks, I just don't think that he can be your sole guy to replace that huge production. I mean, it's got to be guys that step up. And I think some guys that you really have to key in on is Dennis Briggs, who had an injury last season in that chop block against Louisville. He was out for the season and and kind of hurt Florida State's depth in in terms of that. But Leonard Warner coming back for a seventh season, I believe. I don't know how many seasons he's been at Florida State now, but he's got to step up and be more more productive there. Derek McClendon is actually an interesting option because he had three and a half sacks last season. He was actually an effective piece. And – Actually, Mike Norvell has actually raved about him in some of the spring practices as well, so that could be really interesting as well. Quayshon Fuller is another guy. I think he had about one and a half sacks last season, so it's going to be really interesting to see what he does and, and Fuller and McClendon having those reserve roles. He, that both of them really haven't had many opportunities to be able to start because of the guys they've been behind. 
but now they get their opportunity to kind of shine and be more productive. T.J. Davis, I don't really know what to expect from him just yet, but we'll definitely see. Um, Patrick Payton, I think, is really, really talented. Um, he got on the field a little bit last season, but you're wanting to see more out of him. Uh, George Wilson, he's got to get up the weight a little bit more, but I think he can be successful. Um, Byron Turner is another guy I think can really get up that – he's got up that body weight and it's ready-made for the defensive end position, but he did get hurt last fall camp, so you want to see more out of him. Sean Ray Jackson, I'm not really sure what they're doing with him just yet, if they're going to bring him more to tackle or if they're going to give him that hybrid defensive end spot. I really don't know just yet. Um, and Aaron Hester, he's a ready-made true freshman, so I'm super excited to see his development. But overall, with the, with the 11 scholarship defensive ends that we have on the roster – I think there is some production that you can have out of those guys. I mean, there is going to be some key factors in there to see what you can do. Overall, though, the defensive tackle position, I think is going to be a very, very viable part to this team. I think it's going to be a strength for this team because if you look at the depth of the position, I do think there is going to be something there. I mean, you got guys like Robert Cooper, who I think is very good last season. Uh, Fabian Lovett was another guy who got brought back this season, and I was very surprised he was going to be back this season. Uh, Malcolm Ray is a guy that's really blossomed and flashed in, in front of Odell, Odell's eyes. Uh, Jarrett Jackson is another guy that I think Mike Norvell has talked about being an X factor in his defense, and I think that's a pivotal part there as well. Uh, Joshua Farmer getting up to that 310 mark I think can be really uh, effective. And a guy that I'm really intrigued by, actually two guys if you really want to be honest, is Daniel Lyons because I really think that if he gains that weight, I think he's at about 280 right now, if he gains up to about 300 pounds, watch out because he could be a contributor right away at the defensive tackle position. And Bishop Thomas is somebody that I really didn't think was going to have much of a factor this season, but he's really come on strong. I mean, this is a guy that didn't even play high school football during his senior season, and now he was able to kind of step up and emerge in Florida State spring practices. So I thought it was very impressive to see. And the defensive tackle position, especially coming up in that interior, is going to be one of the strengths of this defense. Now, Here's the strength of the defense that I really think is going to be high, but I know a lot of people are kind of a wait-and-see kind of thing, but the linebacker position is where I want to focus on. I mean, you've got guys like Kalen Deloach, who I think really, really took a step forward. I mean, if you look at Kalen Deloach's stats last season, he had 69 total tackles, and he had a sack and also an interception, and he had that huge safety against Boston College late in the season. And I talked about him um, whenever we were coming up in there, and it was just a lot of different things that we were talking about in the Q&As that we were having. And he was talking about how he was going to be able to improve this season. And guys like Tatum Bethune are going to really step up his game. And talking about Tatum Bethune, I also had a Q&A with him as well. I mean, he had 108 total tackles last season with uh, UCF. So very impressive to see the production from him. But he was even upset with some of his missed tackles from last season. He had a lot, had a lot more opportunities to be successful but he missed, he missed out on a couple of those tackles. And he's very frustrated and wants to be able to correct that and be able to be a viable linebacker for this, this defense. And when you really think about Adam Fuller's defensive schemes, he runs a lot of 4 2 five, So a lot of times you're going to have those two linebacker sets out there. But the good news is you do have an Amari Gaynor that's going to be back from last season. He had 59 total tackles. And I think he showed some flashes. But the problem was is the coaching staff really wanted to see him all over the defense. And – you know, if you're given all that much responsibility, you know, you want to see more out of yourself. You know, you want to see those guys kind of step up in that role. Uh, you got a guy like Brendan Gant who converted over from defensive back to linebacker. I think it'd be really big for Florida State going forward there. And even a guy like DJ Lundy, who actually went down from his weight gain from 260 to about 230, 235 now, I think that can be really key as well. I mean, he was more of a prototypical linebacker from the 90s, but – I mean, he had 69 total tackles last season. He got into run gaps, but the problem was, was he was too slow to get in those run gaps to be able to make a difference in the play. And Stephen Dix is another guy who I thought can develop as, as a coverage linebacker, but the problem is he struggled so much in that regard that they really didn't even play him last season. Uh, Jerry Green McKnight, I'm not sure what they're going to do with him just yet at the linebacker position. He was a converted safety over to linebacker, so maybe you get something out of them, out of him. Maybe you don't. I'm not really sure. Um, Omar Graham Jr. is another guy who I thought was a, you know, diamond in the rough, basically, uh, with the three-star prospect out of Shanahan High School. And I really thought that he could be successful, and he's had a good camp so far as well. Um, very impressive to see some of these freshmen really stepping up from the 22 class. But overall, the uh, safety position 
is another one where you got Jamie Robinson, you got Jarquez McQuellen, you got uh, Akeem Dent, who I thought really stepped onto the scene about the last three games of the season. And with Jamie Robinson, though, you you got to think that this is going to be your defensive leader because he had 84 total tackles last season. He had four interceptions. He had a lot of good things going for him. I mean, he was a pest in that defensive backfield. So you really want to see more out of him. I believe they started him out at nickel corner and then gradually moved him over to his more natural safety position. And I think that was the best move for him. Same thing with Akeem Dent. I mean, when you moved him to corner back to safety, that was huge for him as well. And I know he kind of struggled on that safety position, but just overall, now that he's got the, the grip to be able to do that, I think that that could be really big for him going forward. You got a guy like Sidney Williams, who I thought played pretty well in, in most parts sometimes, but overall he's a work in progress. You got to see more out of that. And uh, Shaheen Brown is another guy who I think does a lot of good things in spring practice, especially with some of the mission takeaways and everything that he's getting. But you want to see more out of that group, though. Um, but overall, I think you've got your two safeties in Dent and also Robinson, and then you've got some viable depth at that safety position as well. Then turning over to the cornerback position, you have guys like Jerry and Jones, Jeff Renato Green, who I think is really emerging this spring, especially after you got a situation with uh, Jarvis Brownlee as well, leaving the team and entering the transfer portal. You've got to have a guy step up in that boundary cornerback position, and I think he definitely could be that guy. Demory Tate's also another guy that's filled with a lot of potential, but you want to see more out of him, especially in more of a game-like environment. Uh, Kevin Knowles out of the nickel cornerback position could be really special, and he, he kind of emerged onto the scene a little bit later in the season, too, after kind of get adjusting to everything. He's a 5'11 corner, so maybe he might have something in there. Omarion Cooper has shown you know, that he has made major strides as that outside cornerback that you really need. I mean, it's, it's that guy that is always going to be there, and he's not even really going to throw to your side because you're absolutely dominating that side of the field. Uh, Travis Shea was somebody who I was very high on last season, did not really do as well. Um, it was kind of a conversion over to a new position at cornerback. And I thought he was more suited at safety, but I thought he was one of the most athletic people on the team, and I thought he could be a viable weapon. We'll see how that goes. Um, I don't believe he's going to be playing in the spring game. I believe he's got an injury of some sort. We'll definitely see with that. Uh, Greedy Vance is a guy at the nickel cornerback position, and they're also actually testing him out at the outside cornerback position with Jarvis Brownlee being gone now. Um, maybe you see something out of that. He's done a lot of great things at turn, uh, Mission Takeaway, and we're wanting to see what you got there. Um, Hunter Washington is another guy. I really don't know what you got out of him, really. Uh, he's a scout team player of the year, but what is he going to do in, in basically his, his second year at this point? And you're hoping that that is going to be the time where he is able to kind of break the rotation into that too deep. And then you also got the two freshmen, Zaria Thomas, and Sam McCall, I mean, these guys have been impressive. I mean, they've gotten three interceptions apiece, and Mission Takeaway has been their kind of game throughout this whole process. So they've been very impressive to see. And really the most basic thing I really want to see from Azaria Thomas is can he be able to take this um, kind of high from spring practice into being a viable starter at the cornerback position? And that's a lot to ask for for a true freshman. Same thing with Sam McCall. I think he's very talented as well. I don't know if he's going to end up playing more safety or more corner. I know they have right now at corner, uh, both Thomas and McCall. But will they emerge more to the safety position or will they kind of stay put at that cornerback position and kind of make a name for themselves? But overall, I just want to see how they kind of go over everything in terms of uh, the cornerback position. And hopefully they find five uh, cornerbacks they really like in the, in the two deep situation, maybe even six if, if you can find them. Because, like I said, they play a lot of cornerbacks and they'll mostly play three cornerbacks at one time. Um, and then the last thing is special teams. You want to see a lot of more consistency out of Ryan Fitzgerald. Uh, I believe he went 10 for 13 last year in field goals. So uh, basically a 76% uh, field goal percentage. And then you also had the extra points. He missed four extra points last season. He went 37 for 41. Um, so you want to see the extra points go through, and you want to see those automatic points go through as well. And then lastly, Alex Mastromano, he did a decent job last season, but the problem was he wasn't really punting for average. I believe he only punted for like 40.9 yards per punt, and I understand that he's more of an Aussie-type uh, punter, but you want to see more production, get a little bit more inside the 20s. I believe he only had a couple inside the 20s as well. So you want to see more production out of that. 
And then on the return game, you want to see more out of that as well. I believe that Micah Pittman is probably going to be one of your guys there. Uh, Sam McCall, I think, can be a viable piece there. Um, I'm not even really sure what you're going to do with that other spot, but I'm hoping that Winston Wright Jr. can come back because, like I said, he was dangerous in the special teams. I mean, he was dangerous everywhere. And I thought that he was your viable wide receiver one and your, and your um, kickoff return specialist. But now with his injury, everything's kind of up in the air. So I want to see special teams be more productive and more uh, ready to be able to be a viable piece for this team because Mike Norvell said it best. I mean, when he said it in his press conference, special teams has been a matter for this team. And I think that Florida State can be successful, but it all starts and ends with special teams, as we saw with last season with the Florida game. Um, but overall, I just want to thank everyone for watching the video. I kind of went in depth with each position. Hope I didn't miss anything out, but if I did, please put it in the comments and let me know what I missed or, or what you think the storyline should be for the spring game. And also, if you want to, let me know if you're going to be coming to the spring game because that's going to be really important to see. I'm going to be in lot four. So if anybody wants to come by and swing by and, uh, and talk and everything and talk about our Knowles, that, that'll be great with me. Um, I should be there at about one. So if anybody's uh, interested in doing that, we can definitely meet up and, and do that as well. I hope each and every one of you have a great rest of the day. And as always, go Knowles.